Please help me welcome on stage Director of Customer Success Talent Solutions, APAC, LinkedIn, Aarti Topper. Thank you, everyone. So, I started my career nearly 20 years ago as an HR officer with a desire to want to impact organizations through the power of people. And you can see me here in my first job with my first team. I worked passionately and diligently, moving my way up through the ranks in HR with a desire to become an HR leader. But little did I know then that I would find myself years later with my identity as an HR professional disrupted that I would find myself in a job and profession which didn't even exist a few years ago, that of customer success. And as I reflect on this, I think about the fact that my non-linear career journey has challenged my skills, my knowledge, and my sense of identity. It's pushed me in uncomfortable ways to be agile and to lead with agility. In just the two years that I've been leading the customer success function at LinkedIn, our jobs have transformed, with AI and automation taking on tasks that were previously done by people in my team, challenging our significance and requiring us to embrace attributes that are uniquely human, such as empathy, decision-making, and creativity. Now, this is just one example of the fourth industrial revolution coming to life. And I'm sure that each and every one of you here in the room have your own stories of how technology is impacting you, your teams, and your organizations. The world of work is changing faster than we could ever imagine. We have this world that we know and love, this world that's uniquely human, that's full of connection, it's full of emotion, that's colliding with this incredible world of data. And we as HR and business leaders need to think about how we embrace the beauty and benefits of both of these worlds and navigate these collisions. Every single day, we see stories of transformation taking place on LinkedIn. Stories which are challenging the way individuals are thinking about their careers. Stories which are challenging the way organizations are thinking about work. And stories which are challenging the way that governments are thinking about citizens. And these stories unveil a number of trends in the workforce, trends which I'd like to talk about today. The first trend that we're seeing is that new jobs are emerging and existing jobs are transforming and declining. So let's talk for a minute about emerging jobs. Emerging jobs are jobs with the fastest growing job titles in the past five years. And we know that India is a hub for technology and that tech jobs are rising. India has the highest penetration of AI skills in the workforce. And so it's no surprise that we see on this list of India's top 10 emerging jobs that four out of the 10 jobs relate to AI in some way. What's also interesting is that we see jobs on this list that require an understanding of human behavior. Jobs such as customer success manager and sales recruiter. And what's interesting about these jobs is that the skills required continue to evolve. Let's take the job of a customer success manager as an example. According to Gartner, by 2020, 85% of customer interactions will be non-human, which naturally means that the skills required for a customer success manager continue to evolve. And over the past three years, we've seen skills such as data analysis, customer satisfaction, and customer retention increasing in importance. 
And so what does all of this mean for all of us here in this room? As new jobs are emerging and existing jobs are shifting and evolving, we need to think about how we hire differently and how we grow a new set of skills in our existing workforce. And this is also going to require a cultural transformation whereby learning new skills and adapting to role changes is going to have to be in the DNA of the organization and its employees. So let's look at the second trend. Every company is becoming a technology company. With greater digital adoption, we're seeing a blurring of industry boundaries. And we're seeing everyone is vying for the same talent. So I want to show you an example of a talent flow here. This is a talent flow for a real company here in India. It's a talent flow for a company which shows that the company is gaining and losing talent to different companies across different industries. So let's do a poll in this room right now. Put your hands up if you think that this is a company in the financial services sector. No hands up? OK. Put your hands up if you think this is a company in the food delivery sector. A couple of people. And put your hands up if you think this is a company in the hospitality sector. OK, a few more folks. So the right answer is that this is a company in the food delivery space. But what's most interesting here is this talent flow is indicative of every company in every industry that's adopting technology right now. So those of you who put your hands up for financial services or hospitality are not technically wrong. What it essentially means is that we're all chasing the same talent and all of our talent competitors are now redefined. Does this make you worried about losing your best engineers? Well, you should be. Because globally, in the last year, 58% of software engineers with AI-related skills changed jobs. Talent with in-demand skills has enormous leverage. And the best way to deepen your skills or to secure a pay increase is through changing jobs. So the next trend I want to talk about is the gap. As demand for AI skills expands across a growing number of industries, we're seeing a risk that both the gender and the equity gaps are going to widen. So let's talk first about the gender gap. We're seeing an increasing gap between male and female representation of AI professionals, with only 22% of AI professionals being female. In the past four years, we've seen men and women gaining AI skills at about the same rate, which essentially means that if current trends continue, men will continue to outnumber women in the AI community. And why is this important? Well, AI skills are quickly spreading beyond the tech industry. And there's a risk that gender gaps are going to both deepen and widen. Deepen in sectors that are traditionally male-dominated, sectors such as hardware and networking, manufacturing, software and IT services, and widen in sectors that are traditionally female dominated, sectors such as nonprofit, sectors such as healthcare, and sectors such as education when AI talent enters these industries. And so, as HR and business leaders, we need to think about closing these gaps, not just the skills gap, but also the gender and the equity gaps for two reasons. One is we need to ensure that we're unlocking a greater talent pool. 
But most importantly, we need to ensure that we're creating economic opportunity for every single member of the workforce. Let's talk about the network gap. We know that access to opportunity is not equally distributed. The Search Institute has found that 50% of people that are looking for jobs find those jobs through personal relationships. So the power of a network cannot be overestimated. But what happens if you're not born into opportunity? If you don't have the relationships that are required in order for you to secure the job that's right for you? And this is the network gap playing out. And as I mentioned, as HR and business leaders, we need to be addressing the skills gap, the gender gap, and the equity gap. So you're probably wondering at this point, what can we do? How can we address these challenges? And I'd like to share with you three ideas and three calls to action. The first is that we need to change our approach to talent strategy. How many of you here in the room have a people analytics team or are thinking about creating one? Quite a few of you. Well, we see people analytics skills rising. They've grown by more than 80% in the last year. And this is because the use cases for people analytics are exploding. Traditionally, companies use people analytics to benchmark compensation and benefits and productivity. And we're now seeing a whole host of new use cases, from employer branding to geolocation decisions, to workforce planning, to culture and diversity. LinkedIn Talent Insights, which launched last year, has been the fastest growing product to 1,000 customers in LinkedIn's history. And all of this is telling us the criticality of talent functions to use data and insights to drive business decisions. Let's take an example of an organization that is using talent and insights to drive business decisions. And that organization is Sterlite Power. So Sterlite Power wanted to expand its operations in Brazil and picked a city. But they picked this city without having done a talent pool scan and quickly realized that they were facing a talent crunch and they needed to relocate their operations. But in order to decide where to relocate their operations to, they did an in-depth talent analysis. They looked at demand and supply. They looked at migration patterns. They looked at languages spoken. They looked at diversity data. And on this basis, they decided to relocate their operations to Sao Paulo thus making talent acquisition a key player in an important business decision. Sterlite Power have also influenced business line expansion and new business acquisition within their talent acquisition team, with talent data forming part of commercial bids that they've prepared. Kudos to the Sterlite Power team that's led by Shweta Srivastava, the head of the HR Center of Excellence, who's built this incredible team with a diverse set of skills, from talent management to statistics to analytics and process. The second thing that we can do is to create an environment for people to do their best work. Now, I'm sure that you all in this room would agree with me when I say that the success of an organization is fueled by the success of its people. And collectively in this room, we're all probably spending millions, if not billions, of rupees on employee benefit programs. But 80% of business leaders do not see these investments turning into measurable results. And so we know that a new approach is needed, one that is oriented around the human experience, one that unlocks organizational agility and creates organizational habits that allow people to do their best work. 
And this transformation represents a move from talent management to people success. So let's think about this for a minute. In the old world, we manage talent. I remember this myself, being in talent management. I remember closed door conversations. I remember names in boxes. And I remember a big focus on process. And huge gains were achieved, there's no doubt. But I think there's an increasing realization that talent is not there to be managed, and that the talent in the organization is a combination of individuals, all with their own unique skills and talents and preferences. And so we need to move to this new world of people's success, a world which is rooted in the fundamental belief that if we solve for the growth, the happiness, and engagement of our people, we'll be able to drive much better results. The world of people's success is agile, it's two-way, it's focused on growth, and it's focused on shared outcomes. And the final thing that we in this room can all do to address these challenges in the workforce is to adopt a plus one mindset and bring the humanity into the workforce. For organizations to be successful in the new world, we know that we need to tap into all pools of talent and create an environment where everyone can succeed. And so each and every one of us here can drive talent inclusion, and each and every one of us here can play a role in closing the network gap. This is about reaching out to someone that you don't know, someone that you didn't work with, someone you didn't go to school with, someone that doesn't have the same access to opportunity that you do. And there are three things that you can do in adopting a plus one mindset. You can share your time, your talent, and your network. So let's talk about sharing your time. How many of you get emails or in-mails from people from outside of your network requesting career advice? I know I certainly do. I get many every single day. So my ask to you today is to say yes to one. Take 30 minutes of your time in an informational interview with someone outside of your network to help them on their career journey. You can share your talents. Invest in a mentoring relationship with someone outside of your network and take the opportunity to share your skills and experiences. And finally, you can share your network. Is there someone in your professional community who can help someone outside of your network who may be navigating a job transition? If so, connect them. Because when we connect people, we unlock a world of opportunity. Join me in taking the plus one pledge and commit to sharing a skill or to making a connection that will help someone to get a job. We would love to hear about your plus one pledges, so come and pin your plus one pledge badge at our booth and join us for conversations in HR transformation. So as I close, I want to leave you with this fun, one final reflection. As the world of data and machines collides with the world of humans, we as HR and business leaders need to be there at those points of collision. We need to navigate these collisions to ensure that we're maximizing the power of data and automation while embracing and elevating what's uniquely human in the workforce. Thank you. Thank you, Arti. Thank you so much for aligning us with an HR uh, professional's journey from talent management to people's success. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for Arti. Thank you once again.